We've been tasked to uh, follow the guidelines here in the laboratory handout for Kirchhoff's voltage law and construct a small circuit as shown here which uses simply three resistors and a voltage source. So in preparing for that I've set up already the uh, bench power supply and I've connected leads between positive on the supply to a, a blank terminal on the breadboard and negative on the supply to a, another blank terminal on the breadboard. I've prepared the three resistors and I'm just about to go ahead and put them into the breadboard system. But before we do, before we get too far anyway, I've, I've put one jumper wire from the positive power lead across into the breadboard and I've found that there's a small piece of wire which is like a piece of debris sticking up out of the board so I'm going to go ahead quickly and, and remove that because that should not be in the board somebody has used the board and broken that off and left that sticking in the board so make sure if you find things like that in the board do something about it get it out of the board preferably and into the garbage bin don't just leave it laying around on the bench uh, it's also important to understand that when you're wiring up um, things into the board that you have the piece of uh, bell wire, you know, about 22 AWG wire, and we have to um, strip the ends. And even if you've picked up a piece out of the box and uh, it's already stripped on the end, probably don't use the piece of wire that you first picked. If, if, for example, I'd picked that out of the box and it already was stripped on the end, I'd prefer to cut that off and I'd, I'd start again. Don't be lazy, um, because that's how wires do break off in the boards. They've been used more than once. You only need about five millimeters of copper wire uh, to go into the breadboard system. So again, just um, strip the other end there. A little bit longer for the other end to go underneath the um, connector from the power supply. When you're putting the resistors into the breadboard, um, they need to be inserted a few millimeters into the board. Um, it's very important that they do make contact with the metal contactor in the board. Sometimes with these small quarter watt resistors, the leads are very, very small and they're a little bit hard to, um, to push in. So sometimes you might even need the help of a pair of pliers to do that. So here with the pliers, even with the pliers, a little bit tight to get in, but just carefully into the board. And then the other end, the same. Oops, just find a hole that will go into nicely. This is a particularly tight board. Alright, so I've got two resistors installed on the board. I've got the 3.3K resistor, I've got the 470 ohm resistor, and the last resistor is 10k ohms. One end went okay. Oops, very tight. Okay. All installed uh, now in the board. And finally, the um, return lead from the power supply we have to install as well. So now we have the uh, 12 volts supplying one end of the resistor chain, the three resistors connected in series, and the birth lead going back, or the zero volt lead going back into the supply. I did demonstrate this in the first video, the first lab. Never rely on the power supply voltage indicator. It's not always accurate. You can see here it's saying 8.9 volts, yet the DMM is telling me 9 volts. Because I'll be doing the resistor voltage measurements with the DMM, uh, I'll, I'll set the voltage on the DMM to 9 volts. Table 1 of the lab handout requires that we record the voltage across each resistor. We're required to both measure and record the voltage and run some mathematics using 
Ohm's law and work out what the voltage would be theoretically. So the first voltage there across the 3.3k ohm resistor is 2.14 volts. Just moving that now to uh, have a look at the next resistor. That's the 470 ohm resistor. The 470 ohm resistor, 0.31 volts. And the last resistor, that's the 10K resistor, 6.54 volts, 6.55 volts. So as expected, the larger the resistance, the greater the opposition to the flow of current, therefore the more voltage drop developed across that resistor. The lab tells us to use the voltage divider formula to calculate the voltage developed across each resistor. The lab clearly shows on the second page near the top if we multiply the voltage source divided by one resistor over the total resistance of the circuit it's a ratio method for working out the the voltage across that individual part of the circuit. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've done the measurements as we did before, we saw that, and I've written them into the table. I've added them up and they add the 9 volts. I've done the calculations and although they're a little bit different to the measured values in each case, they still add up to 9 volts. And that's going to always be because the resistor values, the tolerances are going to be slightly higher or slightly lower perhaps on each resistor. But at the end, the end result is always going to be the same. If it's not the same, you've got a major problem in the circuit. You can see here, doing the calculations as per the recommendation in the laboratory. So the individual resistance divided by the total resistance times the total voltage to come up with the, the voltage across that individual resistor. There were some questions asked on the sheet and I've gone ahead and answered all of those questions. We did notice that there were some slight variations of course in the uh, resistor voltages compared to the theoretical voltages that we calculated and that of course is due to the individual tolerances of the different resistors. But Kirchhoff's law has been proven to hold true. That is that the sum of the voltage drops in this circuit do add up to the supplied voltage Vs. I've added a second meter now, which is acting in the current mode. I've got it set to, as the lab says, two milliamps. And it's measuring 0.657. In fact, that is 0.657 of one milliamp, which is 0.657 of 1 milliamp, which is 657 microamps. So we go ahead and we record that on the sheet. So that's with the normal circuit conditions. 657 microamps with the three voltages that have been transferred from the measured voltages in chart number one. Now I've placed a shorting link across my 3.3k resistor. That's this black wire here, shorting it out. And we're supposed to measure the new current in the circuit, which has now jumped up to 862 microamps. Again, we're using the two milliamp scale on the meter, which was recommended to use that scale in the lab. So we'll go ahead and we'll write that value down in the sheet. With the short circuit across the 3.3K resistor, we're required to measure the voltage across the 470 ohm and the 10K resistor. The 470 ohm resistor has now increased to 400 millivolts. And the 10K resistor, measuring across the 10K, has now increased to 8.51 volts. So we'll record those in the chart. The next part of the lab says to open the 470 ohm resistor and record the voltages and current flowing in the circuit. There you can see I've opened the 470 ohm resistor by lifting one leg out of the breadboard. By the time I 
proceed and measure the voltage across where the 470 ohm resistor is, I actually measure the full circuit voltage of 9 volts on the meter. So we go ahead and we record that in the table. You can see that the total current, until I put the meter across the 470 ohm anyway, was 0, 0 and 0. And when we measure the voltage across the 470 ohm, we've got the internal resistance of the voltmeter, which is making the only major resistance in the circuit, and that's having all the voltage of the circuit dropped across it. In the last section, we're required to put a short circuit across the 10K resistor. And I've done that here with the piece of black wire across the 10K resistor. And before doing that, I had to think carefully about what impact that would have on the circuit current. Because the 10K resistor is the largest resistor in the circuit, that's going to have a significant impact on the current. And in fact, I've had to change the range. I've put up, up to the 20 milliamp range before I carried on and put that short circuit in place. It's giving me 2.42 milliamps of circuit current. The voltage across the 3.3K resistor is now measured again at 7.84 volts. The voltage across the 470 ohm resistor is measured at 1.13 volts. And as expected, the voltage across the short circuited component, it's always going to be zero volts. So those values have been recorded. So we've now gone ahead and we've, we've done that. We've completed the table. And as expected, of course, we found out that with the uh, open circuit 470 ohm resistor, that we did in fact get the full voltage supply, full supply voltage rather, across the 470 ohm resistor. That was the one that was open circuit. With a 10K short circuited, we had to be careful there uh, to go to a higher range on the current meter. In fact, when we run the maths on that, the 7.84 volts that I measured and the 1.13 volts added to 8.97 volts, which is pretty close to nine volts, but there's just 30 millivolts difference. And of course that 30 millivolts, just like we saw in the first lab that we did with the analog Hyoki meter, uh, that'll be the resistance to, of the current meter and the small voltage drop being measured across that current meter. So that's where that extra voltage has gone to. Then there were questions, part two questions we have to go through. There's no voltage across a dead short. That's perfectly true. Mm -hmm. What happened to the total current when the resistors were short circuited? It increased. What happened to the voltage across the 470 ohm, 10k resistor, when the 3.3k was shorted, it increased. What happened to the voltage drops across the 470 ohm and 3.3k, when the 10k was shorted, it increased. Of course, we can look at the chart to see the value it increased by. Explaining why the current in the circuit is increased and therefore VR equals IT times R, so IT increased, VR is going to increase. What happened to the voltage drops across the 3.3K, 10K resistor when the 470 ohm was open? It dropped to zero. Explain why. No circuit current flowing, therefore no circuit current means no voltage drops. Question seven, when investigating a troubled series circuit with an ammeter and a voltmeter, what are some things, some of the readings that would make you suspect a resistor is shorted? Increased voltage drops on other resistors, but no voltage drop on one resistor. And lastly, question eight. When investigating a troubled series circuit with an ammeter and a voltmeter, what are some of the readings that would make you suspect a resistor is open? Full circuit voltage across an open circuit resistor. So that completes the Kirchhoff's lab that we did. The lab was quite straightforward. Three small resistors measuring the voltage drops across each one with open circuit and short circuit conditions and then recording them in a table and answering some questions as to what happened.